Richard Dick Hewitt, nicknamed Paco, is a member of the 1969 Eagle Scout class. He is now in his 64th year of scouting membership where he's volunteered at the unit, district, and national levels. He's a certified instructor for the League of American Bicyclists and the Professional Snow Ski Instructors Association and is highly active with the American Diabetes Association, a member of Rotary International, and a board member on multiple human services organizations in his local area. He's a third generation Eagle Scout and is truly an exemplar of an Eagle Scout giving back to the organization. And with that introduction, I am pleased to uh, introduce all of you to Dick Hewitt. Paco, right? Your nickname, Paco? Wow. Yeah. Hey, um, you've been involved, actively involved in scouting for over 60 years, correct? I have 64 years, Mark. Yeah. And one of the things that, uh, that, that through NISA and scouting in general is attempting to do is bring Eagle Scouts back into the active scouting family, but they have to have a reason to go. They have to have a reason to be here. What, what has kept you so engaged in scouting after all of these years? Well, certainly family legacy has kept me involved. My, my grandfather joined the program in 1912. My father came into the program when he was 13 years old. We've had continuous family involvement um, almost for the history of the program. Um, you know, the, the quip and the flippant answer is nobody told me to leave. Uh, but um, what's kept us involved, and I say us because my wife and I actually became Explorer Post advisors together when we were in grad school before we were married. So we, we joke about the fact we've been married 51 years, but we've been scout leaders together for 54 years. Um, carrying on generation to generation and helping, helping young men and young women learn that basic skill set. And, and going back to the essence of, of Baden Powell and, and really one of the initial groups we had with an Explorer Post. Part of the essence of Baden Powell, if you read the history, was taking a group of young people that are going to be together and giving them some guidance and direction. And the first group of of young people we had, uh, young men. Later, we went co-ed and to explore post was that very thing. It was it was a group that I discovered just off the campus of Western Michigan University here. Uh, a group of uh, probably half a dozen or so. Uh, high school boys who were just on the cusp of getting themselves in trouble. I was actually out jogging. They started throwing firecrackers at me and I chased them back home and found out from their parents that, you know, they needed something. So, you know, off we went. And, and that's been a continuation, I think, both in uh, the exploring now, the venturing program, uh, Cub Scouting, uh, Boy Scouts, uh, and now Scouts USA. I've always been involved with young people that, that are going to be together. They're going to they're going to hang out together anyway, and let's give them some skill set. Let's give them some direction, and let's help them, you know, mature and and develop uh, skills and connections that are going to help them all through life. Yeah, um, one of them. It, it's fascinating to me to look at it, at our unique culture here in the uh, in 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 the the United States, primarily, um, we live almost paradoxically. Uh, we place high value in a paternalistic system of being told what to do, which works well in raising children and keeping order in the workplace and the like. Um, but we revere, we, we, we almost worship independence because strong independence is assumed to be the same thing as strength. Um, but scouting seems to go somewhere in the middle of those, which is probably better. We look at the patrol method, the troop committee structure. Uh, it could certainly lend itself to a paternalistic with a scoutmaster in control with an iron fist. And I'm sure that happens, but that's not the way it's supposed to happen. Yeah. But uh, with, 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 with guidance and support, patrols and, 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 and members make their own decisions collectively. And what a what a great way to bridge these two extremes of paternalism and independence in something that's far more workable and, and, and applicable to, uh, to good society. You talked a little bit about your involvement in scouting because it 
but just uh, follow through from generation to generation in your family. And as we talked in a, in a, in a meeting we had uh, before this, scouting had its, uh, its height of membership back in the 70s and then bottomed out and is now on the, on the recovery trail. But I don't think we're ever going to be able to rely on those legacy memberships as we did back in the 70s and the like. We're going to have to bring people who have had no involvement in scouting at a generational basis into the fold. So what would be your advice to people recruiting people brand new to scouting at uh, levels from Cubs all the way through uh, venturing? Well, we are bringing you, and it's interesting you mentioned it since our uh, initial meeting. Um, I've had a couple of meetings. In fact, we had our Michigan Crossroads Council annual meeting, seen the statistics. I've gotten tremendous encouragement just this fall of a resurgence in scouting, uh, particularly at the Cub level, um, somewhat at Scout, Scout VSA, and even at the venturing level. Our, our numbers are climbing. Our numbers are coming up. We had a very successful national jamboree this summer. Um, we are seeing, particularly at the Cub level, I talked with our senior district executive. At the Cub level, we are seeing people come in just for that very essence that you just talked about. They're realizing, um, certainly Cub, uh, the Cub level is more guidance, but they're realizing at the scout level. And I've, I've got to make sure I learn the 21st century, you know, Scouts BSA, we have young men and young women. They're learning and realizing that that youth led, um, you know, the adult leaders are there for guidance, but the adult leaders, you know, it, it's a youth led organization, the patrol base, the senior patrol leader. Uh, they are recognizing that and parents are recognizing that, that those leadership skills, that that knowledge base, that learning is happening from youth to youth. And they're observing and we're seeing more of it. Uh, the older scouts, uh, we're, we're having a little bit better retention of the older scouts, help bring the younger scouts along. And then I say all that because that's our best sales pitch. Uh, we bring parents in and they observe it and parents that have never been involved in the program. Um, wow. You know, they take a look and when they have an opportunity that it's become now a complete family uh, involvement because it, it's boy troops, girl troops. Um, man, it's tremendous. So I'm, I'm very excited about the potential and I'm excited about the potential as we reach out uh, through what you're doing, um, Mark, to, to reach the NISA, to reach our, our cadre of Eagle Scout alumni and bring them back into the fold. You know, I have those conversations constantly as you and I talk, you know, my, my Eagle ring is right there on my finger and has been since 1969 and it's never going away. And that's that's the icebreaker a lot of times in the conversation. Yeah, um, I, I, I don't know how I would how I would maneuver this into a marketing. But one of the observations I've over the past month or so, I uh, I've had a chance to attend uh, a couple camperees and a couple Order of the Arrow um, ordeal weekends. And the thing that just caught my attention more than anything else was the fact that I saw no cell phones. There were no cell phones. People were engaging one another. There were no electronic devices, no laptops, no uh, no iPads. It was just it was it was basic human to human interaction. And as a parent, to see something like that would be compelling enough reason, I think, to uh, <laughs> to take advantage of the scouting experience. Another thing that we've talked about in the past is the whole concept of, and especially in pursuit of the eagle rank what drives a person to to keep on track, to stay focused. Um, one of two uh, foci of, of motivation, one is external, comes from parents and family members and scoutmasters and troop leaders and like, and the other is internal motivation, that stronger force that drives the self to, uh, to accomplish a goal. And I know you've got a particularly moving story about the switch in your own head you made from external to internal on your road to ego. Would you mind sharing that with us? Yes, I did. And it, it is a, it's a difficult story. Um, and long, long ago, but it seems like yesterday. Um, I was a life scout. I was a senior in high school. I was getting ready to go on about the world. 
You know, college, Vietnam, who knows? Um, we were headed out on a Saturday morning in the fall. Um, the morning after, uh, I'd had the, the pleasure and honor of playing in a championship football game, which we won. I mean, my life was, it was a beautiful, glorious morning. Dream of mine to take the troop on a canoe trip. Things were just clicked in very tragically. Um, as we traveled in caravan and scouts no longer travel in caravan, this was part of the reason, the station wagon in front of us with, uh, got to remember, there were a total of five scouts and assistant scout master in that station wagon, uh, went head on with a, um, car coming in the opposite direction. We lost, uh, four scouts. We lost the assistant scout master, the mother and toddler in the other car, um, we were obviously there, you know, long before the days of all of the tremendous paramedic and such. And my, my father and I sat there and held the hand of each and every one of those scouts and the assistant scout master as they passed uh, from a very catastrophic uh, incident. Um, it was probably years later that uh, we realized we were suffering from PTSD as a result of that. But the change, yes, Mark, the change. Um, to that point, I don't know if I would have gone further from being a life scout. Uh, life was getting in the way, a senior year of high school, things were distracted. Um, yeah, I was getting a lot of, you know, particularly from, you know, grandfather and such of, you gotta finish it up, you gotta finish this up. And I really was waning in my interest. And within a few weeks of reflecting on the loss of those fellow scouts, I came to the realization that the, their journey on the Trail of the Eagle was over, obviously. Um, each and every one of those four, I remember them vividly. I can remember quirks about their personality. One in particular, Bobby Alford, I can hear Bobby Alford's laugh today. His smile and his laugh were infectious. That was That became my internal inspiration. I knew that and they weren't going to be eagles, but I was going to carry on because they were all, all four of them were tremendous scouts. The assistant scoutmaster uh, had <laughs> survived some horrendous uh, battles in World War II, and there he is killed on a highway in a scout outing. Um, that became my internal motivation. There certainly was external uh, reasons, but that became a very, very strong internal motivation and remains with me today to carry on the legacy and memory of those scouts that, and, and not just those four scouts. Um, we've had other loss of life of scouts for other reasons. Those scouts who weren't able to complete uh, the Trail of the Eagle, uh, I, I stand, you know, carrying it on for them. And, and that's that has been and will be my internal motivation um, from then to now and on. Yeah. Thanks for uh, thanks for sharing that story. That uh, it it takes no little courage to uh, kind of relive that in a story, but it's so moving that I really appreciate your uh, your opening up about that. Um, one of the things that distinguishes really internally motivated people from not so internally motivated is it seems to be part of their character and their engagement with life. And I look at, uh, at, at your volunteer involvement resume and literally, I, 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 there are only 24 hours in a day, seven days a week, but I look at what you do and I, I don't know how you pack it all in. How does somebody like you respond to a person who says, I, I'd love to get involved, but I really don't have the time when you know better because you, you pack so much into the limited time you have. What do you say? Well, how do you respond to someone like that? Because um, a lot of people say the reason they don't become involved in scouting is because they don't have the time for such stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're right. I have a lot of voluntary involvements. Um, we won't go into some of my medical issues, but recently when I met with uh, my medical team, uh, that list that you allude to, uh, the cardiologist looked at the pulmonary specialist and they ripped it in half and handed it back to me and said, here, cut out half of these. Uh, 
How do I respond to that person? You know, if you've got an hour, if you've got half an hour, there are things you can do just short periods at a time. There are service organizations, church organizations, scout organizations. There's a tremendous amount of things you can do and you have no idea the impact you'll have even if you spend one hour, one afternoon, uh, reading to a kid, helping pick up trash at the park, helping distribute um, food in a food pantry, um, being a mayor badge counselor, teaching a skill. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, I go back to the parable uh, in, I don't want to get too religious, but the parable in the Bible, the mustard seed. Uh, the parable of the mustard seed has always been with me. You know, the, the, the lowly little mustard seed. You ever looked at mustard seed? It's it's really tiny. But you plant that mustard seed and it turns into an incredibly large plant. Um, just an hour or so. If, if I can, Mark, i got to look the other direction here. Uh, I use a quote. In fact, I had it turned into a t-shirt. And I use that now a lot. And it answers part of this question. Uh, David Crosby, who was... Uh, Incredible singer was, you know, we all know Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, and we know all those songs. David Crosby had some chronic illnesses and was fading. And in an interview, uh, David passed in January, but in an interview was a quote that I just love. I use it constantly. I even had it made into a T-shirt. And, and David said, it's, it's not about how much time you got because nobody really knows. It's about what you do with the time you do have left. Yeah. And, and that's it. You, yeah, I'm too busy. Well, you're not too busy to just spend a short time and it's infectious. Um, you know, help out at your senior center, help out, uh, you know, you've got some skill set somewhere that you can just, you know, even if you're walking down the trail, we have a trail behind us. Even if you walk down the trail with a trash bag and pick up a little trash, do something. <laughs> yeah, that's a, and, and I hope that that's an under, uh, it's kind of a, oh, how, how would I put a, a foundational message I want to set through this whole uh, web series that we're doing, um, the Eagle Scout worldview, is I think too many people think if you obligate yourself to scouting, it's an all or nothing proposition. Either you jump in and become consumed, and I've seen that happen to people, or you don't get involved at all. But so many opportunities, if, if only a minimal talent, as you said, merit badge counselor, a troop committee member, uh, just volunteering every once in a while to lend some expertise to a troop or a, 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 a crew meeting. There are a lot of opportunities, and I hope that the Eagle Scouts who are now attending to career and building families and establishing themselves realize that they do have time to give back just a little bit which leads to the next question. And I think this might become one of more, my more popular questions. Do you feel that Eagle Scouts have a sense of obligation to give back to scouting as a result of what scouting gave to them? Or, I, um, or no? No, I, I, I certainly do. I, I can't say, Mark, that I've ever met an Eagle Scout. You know, once an Eagle, always an Eagle. I can't say I've ever met an Eagle Scout that doesn't feel an obligation, maybe not necessarily to scouting, but an obligation to serve and to give. Um, it may not be in a troop role, but it, it is certainly, and, and I also hearken, I'm a member of Rotary and Rotary International, and, and we have a fellowship of scouting within Rotary. The, the motto of Rotary is service above self. And, and I think that intertwines with, with scouting. and over and over again as I converse with Eagles, but even converse with with some who have just been in the program. I think once the, the scouting program is in your blood, uh, you are, you recognize that, yeah, I've, I've got to help out somewhere, uh, be it scouting or some community activity, I, I've got to help out. I think we're coming to the end of this little interview, but I want to give you an opportunity to send any message at all you would like to to the folks who will be watching this in the future. What would you like them to know or um, be aware of? 
I guess, Mark, I'd, I'd like them to know and be aware of, you know, you don't have to stay in the program 64 years like I have. Um, being in the program and, and having the skill set of the program uh, carries through life, and I am delighted constantly to, to live vicariously through former scouts and Explorer Post members as I, I see them go on and encounter other fellow scouts and scouters uh, that are carrying the program forward. And I'm excited to reach out to NISA through the National Eagle Scout Association to bring as many eagles that have just kind of gotten busy and drifted away to the program, bring them back in. Scouting is alive and vibrant. We're headed in a wonderful new positive direction with scouting. The program is growing. The I'm, I'm part of the National Camp Assessment Program. Our properties are in tip-top shape. We have some stellar properties, some incredible high adventure bases. Um, it's a place for the youth of America, boys and girls, to develop that skill set and develop that, that spirit and attitude we want. And I am optimistic as ever about the future direction that we've got with the program. You know, I'm sitting here thinking and, and, and watching on the screen that you might as well be a Norman Rockwell painting. <laughs> well, Mark, Mark it, it, it's interesting you mentioned that because one of Norman Rockwell's, I, I love Norman Rockwell, my, my favorite, it's right above me in my office. My favorite is the, the Norman Rockwell, the Scoutmaster, with the Scoutmaster standing by the tripod yep, the campfire. Yep. My first year as a tenderfoot at camp, I watched out the flap of my tent. I watched my father pose. I mean, that's my father posing. But the other one that I love equally as much, and, and I mentioned this one because I've gone through the transition now, is, is the old scouter in his campaign hat sitting in his chair, sharing his scout mementos. Okay? Yeah. And yep. I was that young scout at one point, my grandfather sharing the mementos. And then I was a father standing over the shoulder of my father as he was sharing the mementos with our son. Now, <laughs> now I'm in the rocking chair, for God's sake, sharing <laughs> the mementos. And I'm going, whoa, how, how, how did this transition take place? Thank you, Norman Rockwell. <laughs> there you go. And there's the generational legacy right there in your own life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, hey, yeah. thank you so much for this time today, for your insight and uh, and guidance. Um, again, we, we only live a few hours apart, so it's not going to be too far into the future that you and I are going to meet in person and um, and have some great forward, conversation. Good. Thanks again right, for your thanks, time. Mark. And that will be it for this uh, episode of Eagle Scouts Worldviews. Thanks again to Dick Hewitt for his insight and his time. We'll see you next time for another worldview from an Eagle Scout. <laughs>